Growing up, I never questioned the strange corn the Abernathy family grew. Every year, it was far taller than any other field than anyone had ever seen. The local town folk tried to get the Abernathy family to share the trick to getting an insane harvest year after year. After a while, the entire Abernathy family stopped going into town. Rumors said it was because the entire family was in poor health for some reason. When one was spotted, they looked sickly and thin. The only member of the family that anyone ever saw was Judd. He was a tall, friendly man who could always spare some change or treats for children. My mother told me that Judd was distantly related. He would drop by from time to time to see how our family was doing or to help with chores around the house. I grew up in farm country, less than a thousand people in town, the houses old and on the verge of falling over. There was nothing for a kid to do on summer break, aside from fishing and swimming in the creek. I was so bored near the end of summer, the fields about ready to be harvested in a few short weeks, and I would be back in school. I was desperate for anything to do when Judge Truck came down the driveway to our small worn-out house. Ma and Pa aren't here. They're at Annie's place, I told Judd when he started to get out of the truck. I tried my best to ditch my accent my entire life. I wanted to move away when I was old enough and thought the accent might have people in the city look down on me. Still, some words I stuck to using. It felt disrespectful calling my parents anything but Ma and Pa. Oh, that's right. I was coming down to ask you for help. Trigger gone off and got lost in the field again. He's always liked you. Can you help me get him out of there? Judd asked me after I approached his truck. Trigger was an old mutt that I loved. I couldn't have a dog because my Ma was allergic but she let me play with Trigger as much as I wanted outside and made me wash my own clothes so she wouldn't go into any sneezing fits. He was a good dog, but up there in years, being half blind meant he might be trapped inside the cornfield forever if someone didn't help him out. Yeah, sure, I, I got nothing else to do. I nodded and climbed inside the other side of his truck. Judd bought chocolate bars to share they half melted in the sun, but to a kid who barely got any sweets, they tasted just fine. The roads hadn't been repaired for years, so we bumped along the road to the old Abernathy place. Pulling up the long driveway, I saw an old woman sitting on the porch. She didn't even look over at us. I know I should respect my elders, but she gave me the jitters just staring off in a space like that. For a while, we called Trigger outside the cornfield while the old woman sat so very still not looking at us. She might as well be deaf if she didn't react to the ruckus we made. I think we gotta go inside and get him, Judge said finally. I agreed we couldn't get lost if we stuck to the rows and the corn. After all, you just need to walk in one direction long enough and you'll get out of the field eventually. I let Judd lead the way, showing where he thought he'd seen Trigger earlier. The corn was so tall, I strained my neck trying to see the top when we started to walk along the rows. I knew I was short, but even a full-grown man would be dwarfed by this corn. Since I grew up with this one field always being so tall, I'd never thought anything was strange about it until I went inside. Taking a few steps in, I noticed how cool it felt compared to the outside of the stalks. I didn't hear any bugs chirping or anything aside from Judd walking in front of me. Sometimes we tried calling for Trigger again while looking to see if he left any tracks for us to follow. I kept walking, calling out every once in a while. We'd gotten pretty far inside the field when I heard a noise. I froze, trying to listen for the sound again. I thought it was rustling somewhere just beyond my line of sight. Did you hear that? I asked, staring off into the corn. Judd stopped to listen for a while, 
when the sound didn't come again, he shook his head. Must have just been the wind. How old are you going to be this year, Ty? Judge asked me after a few minutes of walking again. Thirteen, I answered back without a thought of why he was asking. Judge sometimes just asked questions for the sake of talking. Well, that's a good age. You know, back in the day, you would be an adult by now. You have sure grown a lot in the past few years. Gonna be as tall as me soon. I nodded, not really listening or paying attention to where we were going. For a nearly blind and old as dirt dog, Trigger sure did cover some ground. Shouldn't we head back and get some food for him to smell, Glory Mount? I suggested. In a few minutes, there's something pretty cool coming up. I wanted to show it to you for a while now. Warning bells in my head faintly went off, but I dismissed them. This was Judd, after all. I've known him for my entire life. My parents trusted him, and he helped us out a lot in the past. You know, I got Trigger for you. I heard you wanted a dog, so I adopted him from the old Kelly farm. He'd gotten too old to be a good farm dog, and I stopped him from just dumping him off on the side of the road. I thought if I had him you might spend more time with me. Something about this felt off. I didn't know the name of the feeling in my stomach, so I pushed it down, reminding myself that this was Judd, after all. The man who saw me grow up, and a distant relative. Nothing was wrong, and I was just a little freaked out by being in this weird cornfield that the whole town spoke about. Judd paused to turn to me, his cold blue eyes looking over to make sure I was still following. He held out his hand like he had done a thousand times before, and like all the other times, I reached out to take it without a second thought. We walked a few steps forward to a clearing inside the corn. Seeing an empty space made me realize just how tall the stalks really were. It wasn't natural how high they reached. In the middle of the circle was a chair, a single wooden chair sitting in front of us, empty. My stomach turned again and I gripped Judd's hand for a comfort before I realized this man was the one who led me to this place. I looked up at him, expecting an answer. He didn't even meet my gaze. I wish we had more time together, you know. I thought of you as my own little brother but there isn't anyone else that we can get on short notice, and they have been squawking for something to eat. His tone was serious, and I felt my hands start to sweat. I let out a small nervous laugh, convinced this was some sort of prank. What else could it be? Judd, this isn't funny. Let's go back. I begged and started to try to take my hand away. He gripped so tightly I couldn't take my hand back. I soon started to panic. Digging my feet into the soft dirt, I used all of my weight to pull back to get nowhere. For some reason, they want us to explain a little to the ones we bring over here. The last time we brought someone into the field for them and didn't say what it was all about, they made the worst ruckus for months. What are you even talking about? My voice was shrill from fear. There are things in the corn. We don't know what they are yet. Only the Abernathy family can give the permission to eat once blood has been spilled. My theory is the corn is like a hatching ground for them. That's why it's so tall. It keeps them hidden from prying eyes. They appear right as the corn is tall enough to keep them hidden and leave when we need to harvest. We get a plentiful field every year only at the cost of feeding them. I was still struggling, and my wrist felt like I was going to break it from pulling on it so hard. My entire body felt cold. This man wasn't the Judd I've known my entire life. I didn't know who he was. The person I grew up knowing was a mask that fooled everyone around him. Please, let me go home, I croaked, hot tears starting to fall. He finally looked down at me. A half smile on his face, my entire body froze up and I was seconds away from getting sick. That look on his face was as if he was staring down at a three-course meal 
after starving for days. It was a look no one had ever given me before, and one I never want to see again. Before they come for you, how about you spend some time with me? He asked, still with that awful smile on his face. Being a child, I didn't understand what he could have planned. All I knew is I was terrified. I thought back in school, trying to think of any advice teachers gave me to deal with a situation like this. They said if a strange man approached you to run and get an adult or scream, screaming would do nothing and I couldn't get my hand free. Not wanting any of what he was going to do, I let myself turn completely feral. I screamed and thrashed, trying to get away. Judd looked confused, and he reached a hand towards me to hold me still. I snapped at him, missing the first time. The second time, my teeth sank into his flesh. My screams muffled, but his rang out throughout the field. He shook, trying to get me off. I knew when he did, he might hurt me. I kept my mouth clamped down as hard as I could. I tried kicking at his shins. I'll admit... I didn't have a plan beyond doing as much damage as I could, then running. Giving up on trying to pry me off, he gave my head a sharp smack, trying to get me to release his bleeding hand. My head was swimming and I was dizzy. Any second now, he would start hitting harder and I needed to decide to let go and run or not. My rescue came in the form of something I never expected. Trigger came bolting out from the other side of the clearing, barking his head off. He jumped at Judd and latched onto his leg. Now he had me biting his hand and Trigger thrashing and ripping at his pants. The old dog had never even barked before. He liked Judd, and I never imagined he would attack him, or anyone for that matter. I was beyond thankful. With some regret, I let go, tasting blood in my mouth. Turning on my heels, I ran down where we came from as fast as my legs would carry me. I didn't want to leave Trigger, but I had no choice. I hoped he would be safe until I could come back with some help. Running through the corn, the stalks slapped my face. I could hear Judd screaming and cursing up a storm behind me. He used words I'd never heard before, and if my mother was there... She would beat him down for such language in front of her child. My chest strained against my fast pace. I didn't understand it. I should be seeing a way out by now. I covered a lot of ground, and yet I didn't see where the corn stopped. Suddenly, my foot caught, and I tripped, falling hard. Panting, I sat up, and my body tensed when I heard something close by walking around me. I tried being as silent as I could hoping I wouldn't be seen through the stalks. When a wet, cold feeling bumped against my back, I was too scared to even scream. My heart beat frantically when a flood of relief came surging through my body. Trigger found me, somehow getting away from Judd without any injuries. I pressed my face into his fur, giving silent thanks for him saving me, slowly trying my very best not to make any noise. I started along through the massive stalks, fully aware of every sound around me. Trigger stayed matching my pace, and I kept a hand on his back so he knew I was still there and not going to leave him. Aside from being scared, I was so angry. Judd had been family. The entire time he was just pretending. For what? Were there really things in the corn wanting blood? Or was Judd just crazy? I wanted answers, but I mostly wanted to get the hell out of there to find an adult I could trust to take Judd in. He hadn't done anything to me yet, but that look in his eyes was criminal enough. As the time passed, I sweated through my t-shirt in fear. I was getting closer to a sound I recognized, a clucking sound. I didn't think the Abernathy family kept chickens. I still went closer to the sound, hoping it led to a way out. Keeping walking forwards, I only saw more corn. Trigger stopped us. The hair on his back stood as he grew tense. 
a very low growl came from it, and I frantically started to look around, seeing if Judd found us. That's when I saw it. Something I'm not entirely certain of what it was to this day. Judd wasn't lying. There was something in the corn. This thing was massive. Somewhat hidden in the stalks, it was a dark red. So dark, it was nearly black. It darted a few feet away from me, back and forth, into the field. At first, I didn't think I'd seen anything. The stress was getting to me, and I was just imagining things. Until I looked over my shoulder behind me, and then looked up. Staring down at me was a pair of red eyes belonging to the biggest bird I've ever seen, and yet it wasn't a bird. A sharp, powerful beak looked as if it could crack bones. It was bird-shaped, but birds were simply not that big. It wasn't as tall as the corn, but it still was nearly triple my height. It was the same deep red color as the one I'd briefly seen. The sunlight reflected off of its feathers, giving them an oily shine. I swallowed, trying to wet my dry throat. The thing moved its head around, looking at me. I was too scared to even move. Finally, it raised its head towards the sky and opened its beak, letting out a deafening screech that sounded like a horrible mixture between a train horn and a goose. Some of the same sounds joined it, coming from all sides around me. There wasn't just one of those creatures, and Judd did say they were hungry. To make my luck so much worse, he found us. I stood shaking, looking up at the massive bird creature when movement caught my eye. I saw him limping towards me. He was injured, but all hope still left me. I couldn't escape him and these birds. There you are, Christ. You really shouldn't have run. Now that they found you, all they gotta do is say the word. You just needed to stay in the clearing with me. I would have needed to feed you to them at some point, but at least you could have lived for a few hours more. Even being surrounded by monsters, Trigger was brave enough to growl. That got some of my strength back. I glared at him, hating him for planning on feeding me to these birds. Looking at his bloody hand, I wondered if I could outrun him injured. I couldn't outrun these bird creatures if he decided not to chase after me and told them I was fair game. Then an idea came to me. I looked up again at the massive dark creature. It met my eyes. Both of us were thinking the same thing. Judd said that only his family could tell these creatures to eat. And we were related in some way. It was worth trying. You can have him. I told the creature, looking over at Judd with hate in my eyes. His face grew pale. He took a few steps away from me, realizing what I'd just done. Shaking his head, it was his turn to be too frightened to speak. He raised a hand in front of himself, as if it could protect him from what was going to happen. Slowly, more and more of those creatures came. Despite their size, they moved silently through the field. Judd was surrounded, and none of them were looking in my direction. The moment before those massive creatures bolted forward to claim their meal, I turned away, unable to watch. I heard the sounds, though. He screamed for a few seconds, then a gurgling sound before horrible ripping and crunching. As I kept walking, those monsters squawked and screeched out to all others hidden in the corn. I found my way out after a long while of walking. I was not going to risk asking for help by the house, so I walked the few miles back to town. My parents discovered I was missing at that point, and most of the small population was looking for me. I was returned to my parents with Trigger coming with me, mind frozen in shock. I didn't even speak to tell them what happened for a few hours. When it did all come out, it came in heavy sobs. My parents were unable to make sense of what I was saying through the tears, other than Judd took me to the cornfield and he was dead. For years after, I was never able to tell them the full story. After all, who would believe me?
I fully planned on moving away the moment I could from that horrible small town. A year before I moved, someone else must have figured out what that family was doing. I never heard of any deaths or missing people, but the corn still grew tall every year. That family was still feeding those creatures, and I couldn't do anything. No one knew who it was, but someone set fire to the field. The blaze ripped through the corn, burning everything to the ground. Other farmers had their property untouched. The fire only remained on the Abernathy's land. I was so glad to see it. Then, the start of summer, just before I left, I looked at the property for the last time. Corn plants already sprouting and healthy from the ground as if there was never any fire damaging the soil a year before. I wanted to do something, but the large family that once owned the largest crop of corn was failing. Each year, members died peacefully in their sleep or went missing. Someday soon, they would not remain, and I very much hoped that once they died out, the unnatural corn went with them.